Christmas is a time of joy, fun and laughter. But on Christmas Eve 1912, tragedy struck in Dundee and it affected the whole city. At Smellies Lane, a narrow road that linked Lochie Road to Guthrie Street, a family prepared for Christmas Day. George Lowe, a stableman who worked for Mackay and Robbie, lived in a two-storey house within the stable yard of the company, which sat immediately south of a jute warehouse. Earlier that day, fire had broken out at the warehouse. Eight horses were in the stables at the time, as Lowe had tended to them and settled them for the night. The house had four rooms, one of which three of his four children slept in. That Tuesday night, their mother, Alexina Mackay Pace, tucked them into bed, their excitement growing, knowing that Santa would have been by the time they woke up. Four pairs of stockings were hung on the end of the bed to be filled, and their mother told them they would have to wait until morning to see what Santa had brought them. Soon, they were sound asleep. Mrs Lowe then placed an apple, an orange, a toy and some sweets in the stockings. She then turned her attention to her household duties, getting the house prepared for Christmas Day. Her youngest child was sleeping by the kitchen fireplace and she had just entered the kitchen when she heard a loud noise. As she ran out to see what it was, she was hit by falling masonry as her house collapsed and she became trapped. It had been hit by the falling walls and roof of the jute warehouse, which had been badly damaged in the earlier fire. The North Dudhope Jute Works belonged to Messrs Scott and Sons and the Lowe's Cottage adjoined it. Fire had broken out, and due to the damage sustained, the outer wall toppled over and smashed into the cottage. Lowe had been out, and on his return was horrified by the sight that greeted him. He was the first on the scene. Running frantically towards the house, he screamed, My wife and bairns are in there, which attracted the attention of his neighbours and others. Very little could be done to help those trapped underneath the debris, but the men did what they could, removing masonry. But it was almost impossible. The fire appliances arrived quickly on the scene, but it was dangerous and arduous work, removing the pieces of masonry. The first to be found was Mrs Lowe. Remarkably, she was pretty much unhurt, having been saved by the strong corner posts of the porch at the entrance to the house. But her concern was for her children. She cried, My bairns, my bairns, and we were to have been so happy. She repeated this over and over, distraught by what had happened. The men tried even harder, even though they were doing their absolute best anyway. It took a while, but finally the children were discovered. None had any bruising or broken bones or any other injuries, but all were dead. They had suffocated. They were Betsy, aged eight, George, aged five, three-year-old Henrietta, known as Rita, and one-year-old William. The bodies of the children were taken to the mortuary, but then they were taken to their grandfather, William Pace's house, at 106 Lochie Road the following day, in four little white coffins. He visited the scene, but was upset as he spoke to the firefighters, tears welling up in his eyes. He asked the firemen to keep an eye out for a gold watch and chain. It was also discovered that the eight horses had also been killed in the incident. The stables had been demolished by the jute warehouse as it collapsed and they, like the children, had suffocated. 
On Christmas Day, as word spread about the tragedy, people came to the scene to see the devastation for themselves. The jute warehouse was badly damaged. The Lowe's home and the stables were nothing more than a pile of rubble. It was also reported that day that Mrs Lowe was bearing up well under the circumstances, but that she and her husband were absolutely devastated and grief-stricken. She was being attended to by Dr Jai K. Tullach as she lay in bed at her father's house. As the salvage operation continued, a large quantity of crockery was found, and it was in perfect condition. Among the other items found intact were several highly prized ornaments, pictures and a pair of opera glasses. Even a mirror on a wall was unscathed. Insurance documents were also found. Captain James Weir and Deputy Chief Constable David Davidson were inspecting the ruins when they were aware of a cat meowing. They began saying Puss Puss and managed to locate it close to the kitchen fireplace where it had been entombed by the masonry. Two firefighters then were tasked with rescuing the cat. She kept making a noise but then went quiet and they thought she'd died. But the plucky little cat was found under a boulder and pulled to safety before trotting off towards where the stables had been. They then noticed the stockings and some toys scattered about. As a result of the incident, the Lord Provost of Dundee, James Urquhart, set up a relief fund for Mr and Mrs Lowe to help with costs and the rebuilding of their lives. At a cattle sale on Christmas Day, a hat had been passed round and three pounds was collected. On Boxing Day, the demolition of the jute warehouse got underway. The structure was insecure and wooden props were erected to the gable end to make it safe for the work to commence. The bales of swollen jute hampered efforts as they put a massive amount of pressure on these props. They had swelled up following the dousing of the fire, and indeed some were still smouldering. Slaters began work on the roof, dismantling it slowly and carefully. And still the crowds came to the disaster scene to watch as the work was carried out. On Friday 27th December, a funeral service was held in St Paul's Cathedral for the four children who were then buried in the Eastern Cemetery, one little coffin laid on top of the other as the drizzle began to fall. One newspaper said the scene witnessed today will live in the memory of the citizens. They are unparalleled in the history of Dundee. Among those attending were the city's Lord Provost, police officers, firefighters and rescuers as well as the headmaster of Dudhope School, Charles Wright, where some of the children were pupils. There were also many floral tributes. Among them was one from the city police inscribed in token of sincerest sympathy for the parents of Betsy, George, Henrietta and Willie Lowe. Dundee, 27th December, 1912. Another magnificent wreath was presented by the fire service as a funeral procession passed their Bell Street station. It read, From the firemaster, officers and men of the Dundee City Fire Brigade with deepest sympathy. It was handed over by Fireman Tervit. The route to the cemetery was lined with crowds who stood silently in sympathy for the little children who remained forever young.